glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. I would like to welcome each and every one of you in God's house this morning with the obedience saying, remember thy Sabbath day to keep it holy. Yes. You in virtual land, I would like to say welcome to you. Welcome one, welcome all. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your mercies. We thank you for your grace. Yes, we thank Lord. you for bringing us safely through another week. Yes. We thank you for waking us up this morning in relatively good health and with a sound mind. Yes. And as we gather today at your footstool, we ask that you would lend an ear to, oh God, to our prayers, to our cries, to our praise, to our worship. Dear Father, accept our feeble worship, dear God. Yes. And may your angels and your Holy Spirit tabernacle with us here. Lift our voices as we seek to praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Our first song would be somebody prayed for me. They had me on their mind. They sacrificed their time. They fell down on their knees. And they prayed for me. Church brethren, let's pray for each other. Let's pray for our unsaved family members and one of these days that will be their testimony. So, somebody prayed? Somebody prayed for me. They had me on their mind. They sacrificed their time. They fell down on their knees and prayed for me. can pray together, Sister Nybord, as not only as individuals, but as a corporate body. 501. Here we go, brethren. Tis the blessed Oh, how sweet. 
from this vantage point let's keep on praising God 478 sweet hour of prayer sweet hour of prayer that calls me from a world of care and bids me at my father's throne make all my wants sister Althea and wishes known here we go brethren oh sweet oh
we shall use him 260 260 over all me holy spirit bathe my trembling heart and brow 260 yes it's the Lord. we can feel the presence of yes. god here today amen and we want to implore the spirit more as we tabernacle here here we go brethren
Amen. We prayed and God delivered us. Amen. We have proven him in times past. Amen. And today again, brethren, we shall experience him one more time. We prayed and God delivered us. singing what do you say oh yes bless the lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name wonderful singing i want to welcome one and all into the house of god today as we worship as we fellowship those who are on zoom those who are on youtube welcome god bless you do have a wonderful sitting as we continue to worship you know god is always blessed when the members are generous as if you don't know uh-huh and so today, I am here with two gifts to the church um, for the furtherance of the cause of Christ. And I just want to bless it so that it can be used towards the furtherance of God's cause. We have a thermometer, and we have, um, what do you call it, those sanitizers, dispensers, and uh, the liquid itself. And Amen. that is what the church is all about. Amen. It's not just about coming and sapping up, but it's also sapping up and giving squeezing the sponge that is where you get water from and that's the blessings from god so wherever you are whatever you're doing just also to remind you of the buyer block donation those who are zoom on youtube those who are overseas if you want to contribute towards the furtherance of the seven day adventist education here in sinkets we have a buyer block five dollars contribute at least one block you can contribute towards the furtherance of the Seventh-day Adventist education and the expansion at the school. Loving God and Father in heaven, we want to thank you today for your blessings upon our lives. Oh God, just to know that we are alive and well, just to be in your house and to praise you. Further than that, just to know that we are COVID-free in the Federation. Oh God, we give you praise and thanks this morning. I know, loving Father, for these gifts, oh God, for the furtherance of your cause. We pray your blessing upon it, oh God, so that, 
O oh God, when it is used, that your name would be honored and glorified. Continue to bless the members as we make sacrifice. The Seventh-day Adventist Church is all about sacrificial benevolence. As we receive, we give, and you will add. So we thank you and we praise you for your blessings and your continued blessings upon our lives as we continue to worship you on this, your holy day. In Jesus' precious name, amen, amen. God bless. Indeed, it is a pleasure to be in God's courts today. We invite you to stand and join our worship leaders as we sing hymn number 272 as our hymn for continuation. 272, give me the Bible. Stand at the call of the organ. Here we go, brethren. Give me the Bible, star of gladness, gleaming to share the wondrous Lord and tempest storm. No storm can hide the peaceful radiance beaming since Jesus came to seek and save the Lord. Give me the Bible, holy message shining. Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precepts and promise, law and love combining, till night shall vanish in eternal day. Give me the Bible when my heart is broken, when a sin and grief have filled my soul with fear. Give me the precious Jesus spoken, hold a faith lamp to show my Savior's name. Give me the Bible, holy message shining. Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precepts and promise, law and love combining. Till night shall vanish in eternal day. The scripture passage for this morning is taken from Psalm 119, and we're going to read from verse 97 to 112. Psalm 97, Psalm 119, and we're going to read from verse 97. I will read the first verse, you the other, and we will continue in that manner. Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. I have more understanding than all my teachers. For your testimonies are my meditation.
I have restrained my feet from evil way that I may keep your word. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I am afflicted very much. Revive me, O Lord, according to your word. My life is continually in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. Your testimonies I have taken as a heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. Together, I have inclined my heart to perform your statutes forever to the very end, thus saith the Lord. Let us pray. Great and mighty God, we just want to say how thankful we are for all the mercies that you have bestowed upon us. We have not been what you want us to be, but we are thankful that every morning your compassion, it fails not. Great is your faithfulness. Father God, we ask that you come divinely close to us. We ask that you forgive us, that you grant us the peace that passeth all understanding. We recognize our need of thee, and so, Father, we ask that you will not give upon us, but you will continue to hold us in your hand, directing us into your truth, helping us to do what is right and pleasing in your sight, so that when that day come, all of us may be able to say, this is our God, we have waited for him, and he will save us. Into your hands we commit this service, the speaker. We want a revival in our souls today. So Father, come by here. Touch each one seated here. Those who are viewing via YouTube and Zoom. We have our individual needs. So we ask in you to bless us individually and collectively. Have mercy upon us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. As you've heard, today starts week of prayer in that we join with the millions of Seventh-day Adventists around the world and carve out a special time where as a global body of believers we agree together in prayer on specific matters. The president of the World Church of Seventh-day Adventists, Pastor Ted N. C. Wilson, calls our attention to Jesus' last words before his ascension. He spoke to his followers and he gave them an important commission. We find it documented in Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 to 20. We typically call this the Great Commission. And that is to reach the world for him. This year, the theme for our week of prayer is reach the world, faithfulness in Christian lifestyle. Reach the world, faithfulness in Christian lifestyle. 
One may ask the question, what does Christian lifestyle have to do with reaching the world for Christ? And the answer is a resounding, a lot. You see, because who we are as Christians is revealed, revealed by how we live. What are our values and priorities? How do we spend our time and resources? What kind of life are we living? That's, or those are the questions we must ask ourselves. What it is to be a Christian? It is to be like Christ. That's what Ellen White penned. He is our example, and only through his grace and power can we fa be faithful to his calling as we lean completely on Christ and his word. So during this week of prayer, we will explore some very important topics, beginning with the Bible as the foundation for Christian lifestyle. Then we'll look at how kingdom values inform Christian living and how Christian values, virtues guide our lives. We look at health and we look at uh, contemporary issues. And this week of prayer ends out by looking at living in the end time, Christian lifestyle and last day events. So it's going to be an exciting week. This Sabbath we're here and next Sabbath we'll be here as well. But from tomorrow in the morning at 5, from 5 to 5.45, We'll all congregate virtually via Zoom and our YouTube platform to spend time in prayer and meditation and the study of God's word. A special invitation it is invited, uh, extended to every single one of you so that as together we focus on God's word and we pray together that indeed we'll explore that connection, that connection that exists between our Christian lifestyle and reaching the world for Christ. So let's humbly pray. These are the words of Elder Wilson. Let us humbly pray for the promised latter rain of the Holy Spirit and the power only he can give in helping us to live our lives for him. As we prepare for the first presentation in this week of prayer series, I invite you to meditate and be blessed through the ministry of music by a quartet. Thank you. 
love so amazing demands my love, my all. I invite you to pray with me as we thank God for all uh, his gifts. Loving Father, we thank you for the offerings that have been so freely returned to your storehouse. We thank you for the faithfulness of your believers who have toiled and returned a tithe to you for the furtherance of your work. We thank you for the gifts you've endowed your people with. We thank you for the ministry of music that we've just been taken to heavenly realms, dear God. We thank you for the technologies that you've made available to us, and we pray even now in thanksgiving for Miguel and his team. And today, we thank you for your word, which we shall explore. May your Holy Spirit come now and work that work of transformation in our lives. We pray this in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen indeed. As we contemplate God's goodness to us, we are left in awe. And when we think of all the gifts we could bring to lay at his feet in, in honor and recognition of that love that he has poured out, we don't have any other recourse but to just say, all I give to you, my God and my King. Today we look at the first in this series of, of our week of prayer for 2020. The caption is, your word is a lamp to my feet. Your word is a lamp to my feet. The Bible as the foundation for a Christian lifestyle. This message was prepared by the president of the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, Pastor Ted C. Wilson, and I will do my best to convey the message penned here by God's Holy Spirit in Darwin. Pastor Wilson points out that he had gotten to a very pivotal point in his life. After graduating from Tacoma Academy in Maryland, that's on the East Coast, just about of America, he decided to continue his studies, this time at what was then La Sierra College, now La Sierra University, in California, that's on the West Coast of America. If you are good with geography and you consult a map that's just about 2,600 miles away from where he started. Pastor Wilson confesses that after he embarked on this new and important phase in his life, he received a letter from his father. This letter contained a note card that he had taken time to write out a quotation in his own handwriting. The quote was from Steps to Christ, page 70. It read, Consecrate yourself to God in the morning. Make this your very first work. Let your prayer be, Take me, O Lord, as holy thine. I lay all my plans at thy feet. Use me today in thy service. Abide with me and let all my work be wrought in thee. This is a daily matter. Each morning, consecrate yourself to God for that day. Surrender all your plans to him to be carried out or given up as his providence shall indicate. Thus, day by day, you may be giving your life into the hands of God, and thus your life will be molded more and more after the life of Christ. End quote. Pastor Wilson, in reflecting, comments that not only did that, did he appreciate or develop an appreciation for the time and care his father showed in sharing that quote with him, but it also meant so much for him to receive such a powerful spiritual instruction from the spirit of prophecy. 
This, he says, started his endearment for the writings of Ellen White from that time. Pastor Wilson says that he kept that handwritten note card in his Bible wherever he went until he lost that Bible. But it meant so much to him that he asked his father to write it over again. And he says he, he's kept that copy, that second copy, in his Bible to this day. He leaves some advice for us as parents. He says, never dismiss as unessential your spiritual focus and invested time directed toward your children. I'm going to read that again. Never dismiss as unessential your spiritual focus and invested time directed toward your children. It will pay spiritual dividends through the influence and the power of the Holy Spirit. As we consecrate ourselves to God and surrender our plans to him each day, how important it is to take time to listen to him speak through the Bible. As we read in our scripture from Psalm 119 verse 105, which is very common and uh, popular to us, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. It's important that we come away and take another look at the importance of Scripture. For in today's world, there are many humanistic philosophies that are vying for our, t our attention and ultimately lead us down a very dark path. But the trustworthiness of God's Word is proven. It lights our way. And it gives us reliable divine direction. God's word, the word of truth, the Bible, provides the very foundation for developing and maintaining a relationship with Jesus Christ and for learning what it means to live the life he intends for us. It's Christ's living word, timeless truth, that transcends all human cultures and points us to the culture of heaven. Jesus himself, when confronted by Satan, he boldly stated, and we capture it in Matthew 4, verse 4, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. This tells us, saints of God, that every part of scripture is important. Every part of scripture is important. And while we don't claim that God himself dictated the, the Bible word for word, we accept it as fully inspired by his spirit. Peter made this very clear in 2 Peter 1 verses 19 to 20. And so we have the prophetic word confirmed which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation, for prophecy never came by the will of man. But holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. While Jesus was praying for his disciples, and he was praying for us as well, down through the ages, even in 2020 and beyond, Christ indicated the power of the word when he stated, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. You can find it in John 17, verse 17. So in a world in which truth is considered relative, based upon one's own lived experience, Christ boldly proclaims that his word, the Bible, is solid, unchangeable truth. Through the power of his Holy Spirit, his truth works on our hearts, changing and sanctifying us. Through the power of his Holy Spirit, his truth, his word, his truth works on our hearts changing and sanctifying us. That's the revival that we are seeking to receive and, and participate in this week. 
as we pray and study God's word, we are praying for a transformation in our lives, a revival in our lives. This sense of God is why the Bible is foundational to a Christian lifestyle, because it defines for us what it means to be a follower of Christ. It gives us godly role models and reveals that the way of the unfaithful is hard, according to Proverbs 13, verse 15. It provides timeless wisdom, making us wise for salvation, according to 2 Timothy 3, verse 15. Yet, it's simple enough that even a child can understand. Through history and prophecy, we see how God has led in the past, and we are assured, we are assured, we are assured through his word that what is yet to be will come to pass. Through the pages of scripture, we learn of our origin and our destiny. It's through scripture and prayer that we come to know God. If you would become acquainted with the Savior, study the Holy Scriptures. That's what Steps to Christ tells us. Study the scriptures. Fill the whole heart with the words of God. They are the living water quenching your burning thirst. They are the living bread from heaven. And then White explains, the Bible was not written for the scholar alone. On the contrary, it was designed for the common people. The great truths necessary for salvation are made as clear as noonday, and none will mistake and lose their way except those who follow their own judgment instead of the plainly revealed will of God. She then warns, we should not take the testimony of any man as to what the scriptures teach, but should study the words of God for ourselves. When we approach God's word with this mindset, we get a deeper understanding and appreciation of God's will for our lives. Hence, in forming a Christian lifestyle. This method of studying God's word, the biblical historical approach, or some call it the biblical grammatical approach, of reading the word of God, is clearly defined and outlined in uh, methods of Bible study uh, prepared by our uh, biblical seminary. And the church agrees with this. This is our stance as seven Adventists. That when we study God's word, it reveals God's will and purpose for our lives, and the Bible interprets itself. Yes? When we take this approach, the biblical historical approach, the Bible is seen to be its own interpreter. Not the individual, not the culture, as some, some methods for Bible study encourage, but rather this method explains, this method really uh, helps the Bible, the Bible interprets itself. As the great controversy, uh, page 598 puts it, uh, I quote here for us, the language of the Bible should be explained according to its obvious Meaning, unless, a, of course, a symbol uh, or figure is employed. If men would take the Bible as it reads, if there were no false teachers to mislead and confuse their minds, a work would be accomplished that would make angels glad and that would bring into the fold of Christ thousands upon thousands who are now wandering in error. Brethren, for centuries, Faithful men and women have taken great risks in accepting the Bible as it reads. Some even gave their lives for their faithfulness to Scripture. Today, the book itself is readily available. There is no excuse for not having it. Each year, more than 100 million Bibles are printed. You, you heard me correct. Over 100 million Bibles are printed. And for this modern era, technology uh, savvy and technology driven, there are Bible, countless Bible apps available. One, for instance, is YouVersion, and we're told that they are just about, 
just about or more than 100 million uh, total downloads of this Bible app. So the Bible is accessible. This is in addition, of course, to many of the other online versions that are available. Clearly, many people believe it's important to have a Bible. We can see that by the number of copies that are printed and the number of downloads. Most of us believe it is important to have a copy of the Bible. But how many believe it's important to read it, meditate upon it, and then follow its counsel? That's a question to be answered. The Jews in Berea definitely thought that it was important. Acts 17.11 tells us that these were more fear-minded than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness, and did what? And searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. And so, can we? Daily Bible reading, coupled with prayer, is the foundation of our spiritual experience. When we look at 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, we should come away with the notion that if we are not connecting with heaven, it's impossible for us to grow spiritually. If we are not connecting with heaven, it's impossible for us to grow spiritually. But what a privilege it is for us to reach out to God every day knowing that he longs to commune with us. Pastor Wilson says that that's his modus operandi. As he wakes, he drops to his knees. As he gets out of bed, he drops to his knees and he places himself in God's hand, asks for wisdom and the Holy Spirit in his life. The Bible is never failing in outlining God's provisions for us. He reads it systematically. He follows the reading plan. He, he couples that with uh, reading and following the, the spirit of prophecy. He believes his prophets are uh, reading. And of course, he follows the adult uh, Sabbath school Bible study guide on a daily basis. This is good model, a good model and good practice for each and every one of us. As we daily study God's word to establish that connection with heaven so that we can grow spiritually. It's important also, Pastor Wilson points out, that as we approach the study of the word of God, we should do it in prayer. We should study the Bible with prayer, asking for the Holy Spirit's guidance as we look at God's word. As Seventh-day Adventist Christians, never allow anyone to dissuade you from the importance of studying daily God's inspired written word. Pastor Wilson says, drink in the deep truths of scripture and the instruction found in the spirit of prophecy. Your spiritual life will be enriched beyond measure. And as we commune with God, he is going to transform us as he transformed Enoch when we daily walk with him. The Bible, a study of God's word, can indeed transform our lives. Stories told of a young boy by the name of KK. He attended a Seventh-day Adventist school, a Christian school. To him it was a strange school because they not only learned to speak English, the American teachers were not only very kind and patient with him, but they seemed always to use some black book as their lessons. KK was curious, so he approached one of his teachers. Sir, why is this black book so special? I've never seen it before. His teacher, who happened to be a pastor, Pastor Thompson, replied, this is the Bible. It's God's word that teaches us to be good. This sparked 
uh, moment of inspiration for KK because uh, his response was, really? I must read this and maybe it can help me change and be good. That's something my mother has been praying for for a while. She definitely would want me to, to change and be good. There was that twinkle in Keke's eyes as he learned that this book, the Bible, had in it some secrets that perhaps could help him to be transformed and changed into that wonderful boy that his mother was hoping for. So as soon as Keke was finished his homework, guess what? He opened that black book that he had borrowed from Pastor Thompson. I need to know what's inside, he mumbled to himself. But his mother said, stop reading that black book, KK. She demanded that he stop reading. She said, don't get all those strange ideas from those Christians. Remember, we are Buddhists. I love this book, KK admits, because it has some strange, funny ideas. They asked me to be kind to my enemies. Turn my left cheek to them if they slap my right one. Think of others first. No crying at death. Pray without stopping. Wow, I can't imagine what my friends would say, KK exclaimed. And you know what his friends said? What has come over you? You just drop us and don't play with us anymore. That's what his friends complained about. No more tricks and pranks. No eating pork. No more fun. That's what his friends said. But God's word was doing something in KK's heart. Months later, KK went to meet with his teacher with an unusual request. Pastor Thompson, he said, I need to speak to you right now. I believe in Jesus. I believe in the Bible. And everything in this book, I believe them. I want to be baptized. Can you imagine that? Reading the Bible transformed Keke's life, and he wanted to give his life to Christ. Praise the Lord, his pastor, uh, pastor and teacher could exclaim. That's the only thing he could exclaim. Because as he looked at the transformation that had occurred in this little boy who had taken an interest in God's word and read it, we're speaking about God's word, the Bible being foundational, foundational to our Christian lifestyle. It transforms us. It has that power to transform our lives. In the 1955 publication of Sons and Daughters, on page 20, it reads, In the midst of a life of active labor, Enoch steadfastly maintained his communion with God. The greater and more pressing his labors, the more constant and earnest were his prayers. He would withdraw to spend a season in solitude, hungering and thirsting for that divine knowledge which God alone can impart. Communing thus with God, Enoch came more and more to reflect the divine image. We too are to walk with God. When we do this, our faces will be lighted up by the brightness of his presence. We shall speak of his power saying, praise God. Good is the Lord. And good is the word of the Lord. And those who will be translated at the close of time will be those who commune with God on earth. What an amazing privilege we have. An amazing privilege we have to commune with God every single day. And what a joy it will be. What a joy it is to know that one day soon, he's coming back to take us home. Daily we need Christ's leading as the organist plays for us of 482, Father, lead me day by day. 482, our organist is playing very softly as we go into a season of prayer. Because that's what we're here for, to pray. 
and to get that connection with our Heavenly Father, we get strength as we fall on our knees and we grow taller. As we study God's word daily, and that's a challenge for every single one of us, to spend time in communion with God, in prayer and study of his word. We trust and we know that God will indeed transform our lives. It will be reflected in our attitude, in the smile on our faces, in the twinkling in our eyes, in our Christian lifestyle. But we must spend time in God's word. We must trust him to lead us each and every day. Our worship leaders are coming, our song service leaders, our choruses are coming to lead us as we sing this hymn very prayerfully. It is going to be our closing hymn, but we're going to pause after the first stanza and we are each going to pray individually. Quiet solitude. We are going to pray and ask God to restore in us that desire to study his word and to spend time in communion with him. That's what we're going to pray for. Then we'll continue singing and then we're going to ask Pastor Elliot to come and pray a special prayer of consecration for the people here at Kaon. Even our friends who are following us via YouTube. Father, lead me day by day. That's our prayer this morning. As we recognize that need to spend quality time with God every day in the study of his word and in prayer. Let's sing with our leaders here. Father, lead me day by day. It's 272 in your hymn. Sorry, it's 482 in your hymnals. 482 in your hymnals. First stanza we'll sing together. Please stand. First stanza we'll sing together. After which we'll take a, a minute or two in quiet solitude, praying, asking God to restore in us that desire, that will to spend quality time in his word each day. Thine own sweet way. Teach me to be pure and true. Show me what I ought to do. The organist is going to continue playing softly. But each of us in a quiet moment, for the next minute or two, pour your heart out to God even now and ask him to lead you afresh. Give you that will, that desire, reinstate, reinvigorate that desire to study his word daily and to spend time in prayer with him. One minute or two, we are praying individually.
make me know make that me thou can say that thou can keep me safe by thy keep dear side Let me in thy love abide. Let's do stanza number three as Pastor comes forward to pray that special prayer of consecration. When I'm tempted to do wrong. When I'm tempted to do wrong. Make me steadfast. Make me wise and strong. Mighty hand. I was blessed today. What about you? Amen. I want to encourage you to join the week of prayer slash revival. Make it a time where your life, your spiritual life is revived through prayer, through fellowship. O loving God and Father in heaven, what a word today. Indeed, I was touched, I was blessed, and I just want to thank you, O God, for who you are. You're such a wonderful God. You keep coming after us time after time, week after week, day after day, hour after hour, minute after minute, just, O God, to save us. Today is another moment in your house on your Sabbath day. Just to experience you afresh through your word. We are reminded of the power of reading your word. But oh God, some of us would have experienced the Ichabod in our lives. Ichabod means the glory has departed. Oh God, that desire to study your word and to read it and to sap it up and to live it out in our lives. That glory, Ichabod, has departed. But thanks be to God today, loving Father, for just fellowshipping and reading and listening to your word, reminding us that we can have the Isaiah's experience to see the Lord high and lifted up in your temple. Oh God, may our lives today be revived. May we, like the dry bones, come to life. Loving Father, the question is asked, can these dry bones live again? And the response comes clear. Yes, these dry bones can live. So, loving Father, where we are dry, revive us. Where we are lacking, oh God, make up for our insufficiency. Loving Father, Grant us that motivation and that determination to study for ourselves. Not to prove ourselves best and better in church, in Sabbath school, but to show ourselves approved unto you, God. Oh, loving Father, may the Bible, whether it's the book or whether it's on our phone, become part and parcel of our lives that we may know the word. That the word will be the foundation of our lifestyle. Thank you today for being in your house. Thank you for this week of prayer slash revival. May all of us loving Father present here today in church. On Zoom and on YouTube. May we experience that refreshing from your presence during this week. And we would be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that will bring forth fruit in due season. We thank you for each person. Bless each person. Bless each family. Bless each church. And oh loving Father, keep us faithful with the word in our hearts and our lifestyle. This be our prayer today. For Christ's sake, amen and amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful Sabbath. Let's sing the final stanza now. May I do the good I know. May I do the good I know. Be thy loving child be below. Be thy loving child below. Then at last go home. Then at 
remember the meeting for those leaders who have not indicated their intention to serve next year please stay back just for two minutes so we can discuss Thank you.